Hi, this is an uh, example of uh, WebWorks and uh, it's about topic about 2D resultant and this is a good problem. Um, it has its own uniqueness because normally you are given forces and find the 2D resultant and if you read this one is they actually give you one of the forces and the angle and uh, they give you resultant force instead and then you want to find one of the forces so that's like a reverse way so now i think it's worth our time to look at this problem together so they said f1 is 135 um, pound force and uh, theta one is 47 and f2 is unknown and we also don't know the direction theta 2 but the resultant force is in the direction shown here and you notice the resultant is going to be at the perfect horizontal direction and it's pointing to the left so knowing that we're going to using our same way of um, decompose in the first step and here actually I'm going to make a table even though there are just uh, two forces so this is going to be our F1 this is our F2 and we are decomposing them to X direction and Y direction now let's find out component for X and Y uh, for each of those two forces F1 they said here it's 135 pound and theta 1 is 47 degree so if I were isolate F1 out and this angle here is 47 degree and we will where decompose this force this force is going left and downward so when you decompose the left that's going to be your x component that's your f1x and this will be your f2y direction now let's fill in this here f1x that's going to be uh, f1 which is um, this is 135 degrees oh I'm sorry 135 pound and relative to this 47 degree this X component is adjacent so that's cosine 47 degree the only thing we need to be aware is sine this is going to left so that's gonna be negative sine and now let's look at the Y direction Y direction is going downward so we're gonna just go ahead and write down negative um, then this is 47 so this angle will be 47 as well and for y component right here relative to 47 degree it's opposite so that's going to be sine so we have this hypotenuse which is 135 times sine 47 degree so we have f2 f1 decomposed now let's look at f2 F2, when we isolate out, it's going left and upward. And uh, the angle here is theta 2. So if we were to decompose, that's going to be our x component. This will be our y component, F2x and F2y. And uh, x component, we do not know the force F2. So we don't have a number, however, we can use F2 consider as a variable we're solving, as an unknown we're solving. Just write down F2, then we're going to times cosine theta 2 since it's adjacent. And you realize it's also going to the left, so that's going to be negative value. Okay? So that is a little bit different because we don't know F2, so here we're just, instead of writing down a number, we just use the symbol f2 now let's look at f2y and again it's we do not know the resultant uh we don't know f2 so f2 and uh, this angle is theta 2 because they are the same angle uh, relative to this angle here it's opposite so it's f2 times sine theta 2 so we decompose those two forces now and then we're going to add additional row. Um, you already know it's going to be our resultant, right? We're going to basically, no, uh, maybe not write on resultant. It's going to be our summation. So when we add 
all the x together, which is this column, we're going to get f summation of fx. And when we add summation of all those here, we're going to get summation of fy. But now, since this problem we stated earlier, they gave you resultant. They said the resultant is 180. So this, this force, this resultant, sum of the, all the forces, this f, is 180. If we were right in an ij form, this 180 is what? Going to the left. So it's 180, negative 180. That's x component, i term. And since this force is completely on the x direction, and so how about y component will be zero. There's nothing at y. We only know fx. So with this resultant, you basically figured out forces at the x direction. This value right here is negative 180, right? Because it's on um, perfect horizontal direction and it's pointing to the left. So all the x component will be negative 180. And how a y component of this resultant will be zero. Because when you add them together, there's nothing there at y. Okay? So you know when you add those two here, you're gonna get negative 180. So let's go ahead and write down our equation. Uh, equation number one. So that's a uniqueness. We didn't need to do equation earlier. So it's 135 times cosine 47 and add negative F2 cosine theta 2. That it give us negative 180. Because when you combine all the x component, they should add up together to be 180 and it's pointing to the left. So it should be negative 180. And equation number two is when you add those two one in this column right here negative 135 times sine uh, sine 47 plus f2 times sine 2 that's gonna give us equals zero so now we need to uh, have these two equations we just need to find uh, solve f2 and theta in order to solve this there are a couple ways to do it and uh, for example the first one you could go ahead uh, say from equation number one you could say uh, F2 cosine theta 2. That's going to be bring this to the right hand equation. We have negative 135 cosine 47 um, plus 180, right? That's from equation number one. And from equation number two, then we can also isolate F2 times sine theta 2. Then we'll have 135 sine 47 so then you have that and then you can go ahead and solve it uh, because sine theta square plus cosine theta square equal to one right so using our trigonometry knowledge so if you do that you could potentially just go ahead uh, um, see f2 uh, it's basically a square on both sides of the equation. F2 square is going to be equal to a negative 135 cosine 47 plus 180 square plus 135 sine 47 square. And here we get rid of sine square plus cosine theta square because they are equal to 1 there. right? So you can find F2 this way. Uh, I'm not going to do anymore, but you start to say, okay, this is one way to do it. Once you find F2, you can plug back, for example, to equation number two, then you can find the theta two. Um, that's one way. So I suggest you go ahead and try. 
But actually, while I'm getting there, I realize, oh, there must be a actually easier way to do it. So now let's go ahead and just do a quick uh, exploration to find the easiest way. Um, there are actually many ways to solve this problem, but now let's take a look. We go back to our table. We have decomposed our x uh, and y for f1. How about for f2, we don't need to decompose. We just say uh, this is going to be, let's see, I use a different color. And instead of using this, I just say this is just going to be f2x. And this is going to be f2y. Instead of decompose them. Um, then, when I write down this equation, right here, same topic here, same logic. Um, all the x together, I'm just going to say plus f2x. Okay. And this f2x is going to be uh, negative value, so it's going to be negative because it's pulling on the left. So this will, uh, y will be positive. So, so here we'll have minus f2x. So instead of this, we use that. And here, instead of f2, instead of 2, I'm just going to use f2y. I mean, just using one variable. Why do we do that? This is essentially help us. Then you can find your f, this will be your f2x. This will be your f2y. In that situation, you can understand it's the same topic. But we all know when sum of fx, uh, all those, go down, eraser here. We know that f2 x squared plus f2 y squared, right? It's going to be our f2 squared. So in order to find f2, I can just go ahead, you know, do the same thing we just did here, using the same thing here to solve it. But instead of bring theta there using this trig knowledge we can just say okay I find my f2x number and I find my f2 number uh, f2y number and then I can find my my magnitude right just using Pythagorean theorem really quickly so that's it All right so that's wrap up for this problem bye